Today we're talking about scopes and how to use them. All right, so welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you all had a great long weekend this weekend. Now this week we're talking all about scopes and how to use them inside of Resolve. They're an essential tool that can't be overlooked. And I think generally scopes tend to have a lot of misconceptions associated with them. For example, people think they're too difficult or they can't understand what they're looking at or why bother because they can just do it by eye. Well, we're gonna cover all of that in this week's video and I'll give you guys some tips and tricks on how to use them inside Resolve to get the most out of them, but this applies really to any video editing software you're using. Right before we jump in though, I just wanna say welcome. Thank you for being here and watching whether you're brand new to the channel or whether you, or you've you been here since the beginning. New videos go up on Mondays and Wednesdays talking all about filmmaking tutorials, product reviews, and so much more. So make sure if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out immensely. And also be sure to ring the bell so that you don't miss any new videos. Let's get to it. All right, so we're on the color page in Resolve as scopes are used heavily in color grading. But before you say, I'm just an editor or I don't need to know this, hold on. Even some base color correction or even grading is becoming a more common thing when working on projects. This is just one more thing you have to offer to make you more valuable as an editor, colorist, or even just for your own videos so you can get amazing looks every time. So if we're looking at our color page here, we can see this button down here. If you aren't already on the scopes, you can click here and they become visible. You can also expand these and you'll get a window here. You can resize. You also have the option of choosing up top if you want one scope, two, four, or up to nine. Nine is overkill in my opinion, unless you're doing such specific work, but I usually just keep it on four. So there are five kinds of scopes, one of which we won't really be using too much is the CIE graph. The rest of them you can kind of see here. You'll recognize this as the color space graph though that I showed in my other video about color space. If you want to find out more about that, I'll link the video above. For the sake of today's video though, we'll stick with our waveform, parade, vector scope, and histogram. We'll go through each one and I'll give you some tips on how how you can get the most out of each one. By the way, so just a quick side note here, most of your options can be found within the scopes window. However, there is one setting to GPU accelerate your scopes. That's found here in uh, the preferences section, the user preferences. It's on by default, I believe, but if you're working on a more powerful system, you can use the graphics card to make them more responsive, essentially. If you're working on a laptop or a weaker system, you may want to disable this and see if your performance improves any. So first, I'll take you through some customizations you can do, and then we'll talk about how to read each one. Okay, so first off, some overall options. Click on the three dots here, and we have a little menu. Performance-wise, at the bottom, you can choose low, medium, or high quality of scopes. This doesn't affect your video, but may help performance on slower machines. You can also choose auto and Resolve will do its best to perform at the highest level it can given your system specs. So ratio, if you're working on a widescreen monitor or you have a bit more room, you can choose 16 by nine aspect ratio for your scopes. On smaller screens or laptops, for example, where you don't have as much real estate, let's say, um, you can choose four by three and it'll narrow your scope window. Once again, it doesn't affect your actual video. This isn't your video scaling, but it's just how scopes are displayed. I leave mine on 16 by nine. Okay, low pass filter takes out signal noise essentially. So here in the image, you can see there's quite a bit of signal noise and it distorts how the scopes present the video information. You can enable low pass and that'll take it out of the image, but as a result, you might not get accurate highlight information, for example, as it did narrow the range. So if you're going to turn this on, you should also turn on extents and this can be turned on on each scope individually, which will also so show you the full signal of the video, including what might not be there anymore with low pass enabled. One other option that has no bearing on your output, but can help you get more accurate information from scopes is here, video versus data level scopes. So data level is on by default and it's a little misleading, although technically it does show the same information. So for deliverables, blacks don't clip at zero. Typically they'll clip at 64, I believe. 
and white's at around 940. So here we can see the graph extends all the way out to 1023, which are just luminance levels. So that's your light information within the clip. We won't go into that here, but just know that the top of the graph represents your highlights or your whites at the top and shadows and blacks at the bottom. So if you have data level inputs here, you can see that if you hit zero, you have a true black point. And if you hit 1023, you have a pure white point. Beyond that, you lose data information in those regions or what's referred to as clipping. Your image quality starts suffering at that point and it looks like you've lost whatever sensor data might have been there at that point. The true black point though, if you're working especially with like broadcast or video level signals is 64. So if you turn on video levels and then we can come to waveform for example, we still only have the line for zero. So what you can do is click on the options click show reference levels, and then we can define our own. So we'll put in 64 for the low and 940 for the top, and there we go. Now Resolve shows us our new reference points and we can see if our image is in that space. Cool thing about this and little side note here is that if you just have it on data level points, which goes from zero to 1023, once you clip your highlights, for example, or your blocks for that matter, you just know that you're losing information, but you don't know by how much you're losing information because the graph just squishes all that data at the top. And you can tell you've lost something, but you don't quite know exactly what. Now, if we go back and do video levels here, and then we define it with the 64 and 940, let's say we do clip the black point and we go underneath, you can see we have a little bit of room to play with so you see exactly what you've lost right it goes under but then you can kind of see hey i have you know this much under the black level point i can bring that up slowly and or i haven't lost that much information nothing that i care about and you can just leave it like that so you can see here if we turn on video levels we're okay not clipping anywhere here in this image but we also don't have a true black point what we can do is come to color wheels go to lift and pull down and there we go we have a true black point without losing any information at this point. Okay, a few more things to cover. We also have individual options for each scope. These will be largely the same throughout. So if we come to waveform, for example, we can choose between the red, green, and blue channels. Parade and histogram breaks it up that way already, but you can also add luminance or your light levels in both by selecting YRGB. I typically just leave that on my waveform um since it's already up and i'll turn these off don't worry about cbcr uh, right now we can skip past that we also have brightness levels for the scope itself so i can brighten up the waveform or the graph display or turn it down if i need to see something better same goes for the other scopes one other really cool feature if you need it is to go up to the main options here and click on display qualifier focus and if we go to our qualifier tool in the video viewer here uh, you'll actually see it'll now show us where our where we're pointing on the image and where that corresponds exactly on the scopes. Really cool if you wanna pick out certain information or see if we have like a color cast, for example, in certain areas. All right, so this brings us to a good talking point here. The information on the scopes is laid out exactly like our image. So you'll see on the waveform and the parade, if I point to the left side of the image, the data in the scopes is also on the left side, exactly where it would be in the image. If I point to the right or the middle, you'll see the information on the scopes follows along. So basically you can think of scopes as the light information in an image laid out from left to right, just like if we were to have our image sort of superimposed upon the scope screen here. I think that's a really easy way to think about it and that kind of helps you get more out of your scopes because you know what you're looking at. Now, vector scope is a little different, but vector scope is one of the coolest tools in my opinion. Essentially, it's showing us the saturation of the image the exact middle is our white point. So if we had just one dot in the middle, that would be our white point. If I put a power window actually here, and uh, let's move it up to our whitest point, you can actually see uh, it's just a white dot in the middle. So here we have a pretty good white balance for our white point actually. But with a vector scope, you can also pick out your lows, mids, and highlights as well. Since we have less information in the highs, for example, we can also drop down to the menu here and do 2x zoom, which will give us a better idea of what we're working with. Now, this doesn't affect your color grade, it's just how it's displaying the information for you in the scope. All right, one last thing here, we also have the skin tone line. This represents perfect skin tones. Now with skin, you either want to be directly on or slightly to the right of the line. 
You never really want to lean left because then you start going yellowish green, which is unpleasant for skin. Now there are exceptions for that, especially if you're trying to really push an image or do something artistically, make a creative choice basically. But if you're trying to go for realism or color correction and kind of balance out your image, you really want to be on that skin tone line or like I said, just leaning right of it, if anything. You can actually see if I put a power window here and just isolate the skin, we're actually already pretty close. If I actually take the hue here and go back and forth, you can actually see what's happening to the skin going from green to purple. You also have all of your colors arranged here at the 75% amplitude for reference. So if you're working in Rec. 709, you never really wanna go past these boxes as that's the limit of saturation that's broadcast safe. The further out you go, the more saturated the color or image, but you really start breaking the image apart if we're going beyond these 75% reference markers. Last thing I'll touch on very briefly is CIE. You can see it shows us our Rec. 709 color space. Currently, we're well within the limits of Rec. 709. We can also add other reference spaces if we want. For example, we can compare Rec. 709 to Rec. 2020, which is uh, essentially just HDR grading but great if you're working in that kind of environment to kind of visualize where you are with your, with your colors. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned a lot about scopes. Now they're very useful and I love using them because you can trust scopes no matter what monitor or reference you're looking at or you're working on and it's always gonna give you the most accurate information. Our eyes can deceive us, but scopes always tell the truth. So if you've learned anything or at least found the video entertaining and informative, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like on this video as well. Drop a comment down below as I love hearing from you guys. And until next time, get out there and create something. Bye.